The polygon below are similar. Determine the scale factor and find the length of the missing sides. Okay, so we have a smaller one to a bigger one. And so the scale factor is going to be the same thing. It's just depending on how you write it, okay? From A, B, C. So what we're going to do is we, we don't have to do two forms. We just want to, we're going to write the, the smaller one on top all over the bigger one is what we're going to do. Okay, we'll do small over big. So we're not going to need both versions. So looking at this, what we have to do is find the pieces that are similar to each other. So if you look at it, the orientation is kind of weird. So if you look, I'm going to put... These aren't really congruent, but those are similar. Those ones go together, okay? And then the big ones go together, okay? So then it looks like here's the smallest side. I'll mark that with three, okay? And then what we need to do is have at least one side where we have both of them. So it looks like it's going to be right here. So this one and this one. So I'm going to put the small one on top, okay? and then I'm going to reduce this down so this is the same as 2 over 5 and 2 over 8 All right. so, the, so basically 5 eighths is our scale factor okay so now we can find our missing sides kind of clean it up sorry okay. so as I look at it okay so what we need to do is find this small side over here. So this is an eight. Okay, this is the bigger one. So we're not going to find all the sides here for the sake of time. But let's go ahead and find this one right here. So as you can see here, I, J, and E, D are similar to each other. So we're going to set those up. So um, this is going to be our X value. Okay, we don't know what that one is. So what I'm going to say here is the small one on top of the big one. So it's going to be X over five is equal to right the given similar uh, the scale factor that we figured out which is 5 over 8 okay and then I'll multiply these two together and that's what I'll multiply by so I'll multiply both sides by 40 okay so we're looking at 40 X over 5 right it goes 200 over 8 and so we get 9 X equals Four would be 25, so 50. And 25. And then divide by 9. I want to get a decimal on that. It's about 2.78 ish. Okay. Right, moving on to the next one. So um, we're going to determine if they're congruent and we're going to use some of these. And we're not using hypotenuse leg on this test. We don't need to worry about that one. So these are our four congruence theorems that we have. So looking at here, I got an angle. They're telling me 6 is congruent to 6. So this is an angle, right? A side and then an angle. It's got to be in that order, right? So angle, side, angle. See all the sides in between? So these are congruent by angle, side, angle. Okay. And then here they're telling me that C is the midpoint of these. So that means it's in the middle, right? So that means this piece and this piece are the same. Okay. The AC is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. I know it seems kind of obvious, right? And then this one here is also 90 degrees. So they're congruent, right? Because they're both 90. So we have side, an angle, and then a side, right? So this is going to be side, angle, side. Okay. Coming over here, we're looking at, okay, we got congruent angles, and we got a one set of congruent sides, and then we have this side congruent to itself. So if you look at this, it's going to be an angle, and then a side, and a side, or side, side, angle. There is no side, side, angle. Okay, so this is not congruent, okay? There is no SSA theorem, okay? Not congruent. I know it looks like it should be, but it's not, okay? So looking down here, 
BD is congruent to itself, so we got a side, a side, and a side. So this is side, side, side. So this is the big one that we need to remember. Whenever you have these intersecting lines, these two are vertical angles. So those two are always congruent, right? So we're going to have an angle, an angle on a side, an angle, angle on a side. Okay, so that's angle, angle, side. And then looking at this one, they're marking them. So be careful the way that they're kind of, the orientation on this one's kind of weird. So if you look at this, there's a congruent side and there's a congruent side. And then this side is this side are also congruent. So we have two congruent sides at a congruent angle. The problem is they're not in the same spot. So if you look at this, the congruent angle is opposite to 12. And in this one, the congruent angle is opposite to 10. Okay. So they, they, did not, they didn't give us the corresponding part that goes with it. Okay. So these are not congruent as well. Okay. Those are not congruent. Okay. All right, so let's look at these flow proofs. And so we're looking at basically the same piece of information, okay? Oh, it looks like the uh, diagram did not get labeled correctly, so we're gonna go ahead and label this. So we're gonna call this L, M, N, T, and W, okay? So now, let's go ahead and do this problem. So we basically want to prove that these two triangles are going to be congruent to each other. So what we need to do here is label information that is given to us. Okay, so we know that side MN is congruent to NT. Okay, and that was given to us. We also know that LN is congruent to NW, and that was also given to us, okay? Now this is the one where you gotta be looking for this. So here we go, we got vertical angles again right here, because there are two intersecting lines, the opposite ones are angles are congruent. So I'm gonna put my angle symbol in here, I'm gonna say LNM Okay, is congruent. Okay, L M N. Then I'm gonna say uh, W N T. Okay. Now this is that they are vertical angles, but to say that they're congruent, okay, is the vertical angle. We're out of room here. Theorem. Okay, so that's why. So vertical angle theorem tells me that. So the definition of vertical angles tells me that they are vertical angles, and the theorem is the one that tells me they're actually congruent. And I know it's kind of a small detail, but make sure you have the word vertical angles in there. Okay, so now we have side, angle, side. That's going to be our, our, our proof right there, side, angle, side. So as I look at this, okay, we're going to go ahead and say, hmm, Okay, so we got to get the corresponding parts. So you see how the M and T are on the same line. They have this, they share this congruent side. So the M is going to go with the T. Okay. So the T is in the middle. The L goes with the W. So that's going to go in the front here. And the last one is the N. Okay. So I kind of ran out of room. Um, I should have put the triangle symbol in there, W, T, N, okay, and that would be kind of ran out of room though. Alright, okay. let's look at this next one, and we're not going to do number five. Okay, so it is given that D, E, and H, G are parallel, that's what these little arrows are. Okay, and they're telling us that these angles are congruent. Okay, all right. Um, we also know that vertical angles, okay, again, we have vertical angles here. Oh, we did above, now we do it down here as well. So this one and this one 
are also congruent by vertical angles. Okay, so let's put our information, let's put the given information in here. They told us angle D was congruent to angle G that was given in the diagram. And then we figured out, now we can't say F because they can't use it for the same one, right? So we got to say D, F, E is congruent to angle. So um, H, F, G, run out of room again, okay? And that was vertical angle theorem again, okay? Just abbreviating that, sorry. And then um, they also told us that side D, E was congruent to H, G. That was in the diagram, okay? This, this, this little line is. So remember, the arrows mean parallel, the little tick marks mean congruent, okay? So if you look at this, we got angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. Okay. So let's get all the corresponding parts together. So D and G go together. So if I can, let me see if I can fit it in here. G, okay. That means H and E need to go together. So it's going to be H, okay. And then F goes with the F. 